Good morning, it's Saturday the 4th of April 2015 and a happy Easter to you boys and girls. Easter, it, well I say happy, it's not happy yet. Because as of yet, he has not risen, boys and girls. He dies on Good Friday, he rises on Easter Sunday. So it's not really happy yet. So we must be miserable and unhappy until tomorrow. Well, at least until tonight. I think midnight is the click over time, if you see what I mean. Good morning. Uh, we've got a couple of, we've got a birth. Oh, we might have a couple, actually. Hang on a minute. 16 others. God, who are these people? Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let me have a quick look. See if there's anyone of importance. Nope, only one person of all oh, two people of importance this morning. Um, first of all, one of our regular listeners. Now, this lad listens to the show. He is the manager of a pub halfway to heaven. Very successful manager who's uh, turned that place around, haven't you, my darling? He's turned this halfway to heaven little pub around, uh, which is just in front of Charing Cross Station in London. His name is Angel, and today he is an old bastard. Yes, indeed, he is today become an old bastard. He (laughs) He is now 32 years old. God, don't you look at Angel. You really do. He listens to the show uh, while he's doing things in the cellar. I'm not quite sure exactly what he does there. I have heard a couple of stories, Angel. I have heard a cut. Did you get caught? I have. I've, sorry. You yeah, have heard a couple of stories about incidents in the cellar with you. But generally, I thought you were. Is it called bottling up? or changing pipes, or doing things like that. Anyway, he listens to the show on an iPod, boys and girls, on an iPod, or maybe even an iPhone. He listens down there while he's doing his his work. So we must sing Happy Birthday to Angel. Are you ready? Happy Birthday to you. indeed and he's one of the young people that i'm very proud and privileged to say i've seen grow from a young boy into the manager of a pub he used to come into the place uh, a place i used to work at um in camden town and i was there for 18 years the black cap in camden town and he was one of those young boys who used to come in little fat thing he was he won't mind me saying this because he's not fat anymore he's like you know He's quite fit looking. I mean, obviously not as fit looking as me, but then again, who is? You know, he is quite fit looking and he does all that. I think he does that weightlifting business. No, I can't be doing all that. Oh, God, I'm just naturally fit. Oh, there's a button open. I don't actually need to do all this gymnastic stuff and things like that. But he was a little fat thing. He used to come into the black cap and dance all night on the stage to tunes like Kylie Minogue. I'm spinning around. Yes, indeed, and he likes his R&B. So happy birthday today to Angel. And it's an absolute pleasure and very proud to see how well you've done for yourself. All right, Angel? Happy birthday to you, sir. And also, happy birthday to someone else, uh, James Dean, who made an appearance here a few weeks ago, and is a very, very important person. James Dean is very, very, very important person running that huge radio station in Manchestersford called Tameside Radio. Yes, he's very, very important. Higher and... F- yes, higher and fire. Oh, yes. Yes. And it is funny, actually. It is funny how you see certain people in this world, James Dean, uh, that, you know, tell you how good you are at something. And then as they get older, they think, oh, no, it's just that sad old man talking to everyone in his spare bedroom. Isn't it? That's how, that's how it is. You know, young people, they come to me and say, oh, you're really good, Chris. And then as they get other jobs, you don't actually get jobs offered. And that that is telling me something, James. I'm, you know, quite hurt by that in my little heart. And it is a very uh, this this broken into many many pieces heart over the years. It really is. Anyway, it's his other half's birthday today, Ben Garion Phoenix. Yes, you heard me right, Ben Garion Phoenix. Now, it, I want to know: is that a made-up name? I cannot believe. 
anyone has it's very hot in here today it, anyone has a name like ben gary and phoenix is that your real name or is it say so, and i think ben is from is from sunny wheels he's from wheels who was that woman <laughs> on the election debate program the other night from wales what planet was she on she, she just didn't seem to fit into me. I mean, she came across as nice enough, but it was all a little bit wishy-washy. Do you know what I mean? you got to say what you think. I'm not sure who she was, but good luck to her anyway. I'm sure she'll get a couple of seats. It's, ben, you could become a member of Parliament. You could re represent the Long Hair Brigade or someone like that. Anyway, we must wish Ben a happy birthday as well, OK, because it's not fair to do one and not the other. Sing along, everyone. His name's Ben. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. There we are. Ben, Gary and Phoenix, which we think must be a made-up name. I can't believe anyone is called Ben, Gary and Phoenix. But happy birthday to you, sir. OK, happy birthday to you. Good morning to Wendy, who's with us live today, and says, I see you're wearing your tablecloth today. Yeah, tablecloth with a hood. Have you seen this? Have you seen this, Wendy? Look at this. Look, look, look. This is, this is one of two shirts I own, and the shirt itself actually has a little hood, which is complete, actually completely useless, to be honest, because if it's windy outside, you put this on, it doesn't make any difference. Your ears still feel like they're about to fall off. They do. And again, if it's raining, you know, you put this, oh, it's raining, you put this hood up, and you get one drop on there, and it's completely useless. Why have they put a hood? But it looks all right. It does look good. So thank you. I'm glad you like my little table uh, tablecloth um, uh, uh, hoodie type thing today, OK? Now, being a Saturday afternoon, if you're with us live, have a quick look at the clock, OK? If it's coming up to 10 past 12 in the afternoon on the Saturday, the 4th of April 2015, then you are indeed watching or listening live. And you can join in, boys and girls, either by Skype. Do you have the wonders of Skype? If so, you can contact us by Skyping at United Kingdom Talk. All one word, United Kingdom Talk. You can either send a message or call in. You can call in. We don't get many callers on a Saturday morning. We have done on the Wednesday night shows, lots on the Wednesday night shows, but not on the Saturday morning for a second. Is everyone running around? Are they all running around doing their shopping? Very, very important shopping. Uh, there's also another way to contact us by telephone. We have a local London number. A local London number. OK? 20 8144 they They're the methods to contact us if you're with us live. If you're listening or watching a recording of the show, please send an email and I'll read it out on the on the next show, OK? The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, to Lewis Shum, hello to Anne. Good morning, Anne, who says, Good morning, Chris. Just having my tinned peaches and porridge. Oh, that sounds nice, Anne. Tinned peaches and porridge. Mmm. It's ages since I had tin peaches. Mum used to do them on custard or in custard. You know, obviously without the... Uh, but you need the juice, don't you? The juice. No, she didn't. That's wrong. Just a minute. No, it was banana and custard, wasn't it? I think it was peaches and... Yes, peaches and cream. Re oh, there's a song by that. Reunited cos it feels so good. Reunited cos we're under... Yes, tin peaches. Tin peaches and cream. Very tasty. I recover from a good night out last night at the 286 reunion in Lewisham. Where do they hold that then? I was there for a little while, about six months before it closed down. And they weren't paying the rent. <laughs> I don't think they were paying the rent, Anne. Shocking way to carry on, dear. Uh, love your shirt. You look like you're on holiday mode. Nice and cheerful. Well, as you know, Anne, I am always cheerful. Unless I'm forced by my best friend Ron and his other half to watch crap on the telly like they always have on round their house. Things like keeping up with the Kardashians. 
come dine with me. The X Factor, Big Brother, ice skating. And all those. They sit there and watch all these... Oh, and Anne, you asked me to watch James O'Brien. You sat there, I think, Wednesday night, sending me a message. Well, you can call in if you want, Anne. Uh, sending me a message about the James... Oh, you got to watch it, Chris. You'll love it. You'll love it. So I did. I watched it. What a load of crap. He's useless. He's absolutely useless. Absolutely useless. I watched it yesterday on the ITV Plus One catch-up playing player thing on the satellite, wherever it is. And there he was. And he has no control of the audience. He can't do it. And don't say it's, you know, it's because it's his first couple of shows. He's done five now. He should be able to do it by now. He's no good. Is that you calling in now, Anne, on line one? No, it's Ray. Oh, good morning, Ray. <laughs> good morning to you. I, I was just talking about the James O'Brien show. Yes, Did you see it, Ray? it last night. Yeah, I, I, um, I had to switch off after about three minutes. I thought, oh, no, I won't watch this. He's trying to be, trying to write the other man on um, ITV. No, no, no. He no, can't no. control the audience. Well, there you are. Did he, you know is, he, is it an experiment, or is he just left for a, a, a season? Well, I, I hope it's just an experiment. He's useless mm. on there. Mind you, it can't be much worse than uh, Big Brother... Uh, no, what's the other one? Oh, the, the old bags sitting around the table. What's that called? Uh, loose Women. Loose Women. It can't yeah. be any worse than that, to Actually, be honest. there's too many programmes that are the same, aren't there? It, oh, it, it's one and right. after the other. It's just, just horrendous. This Absol is they call Dumbing Down TV. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, because they don't want to play uh, proper actors or anything <laughs> like that. Thank you for a lovely night last night. I really yep. enjoyed it. Okay. And uh, Johnny and I um, did our thing with our ukuleles. I think I'll speak ukuleles this morning instead of pirate radio. Please do. Let me, tell you, let me tell you, Ray is one of our uh, uh, wonderful people that comes down to the karaoke night and he plays the ukulele. Now, you might have seen it. If you're one of my Facebook or Twitter friends, uh, you might have seen the uh, uh, karaoke videos from the either the city of Quebec or... Uh, Central Station and Ray and uh, his friend Johnny often make an appearance um, on there playing ukuleles and things like that, don't you? Thank you very much because it it's nice, nice to see you get a nice following on that because when we were up in Blackpool for our George Formby convention just yes. about two weeks ago now and um, people say, oh, I've seen you on Facebook thanks to you, you see. Oh, really? So it spreads around. Oh, yeah, the people in the north. Far north of Watford. Oh, that's um, fantastic. They, they say to me, oh, thanks, we've seen you do your thing. So that's great. But, uh, we're, we're putting London on the map. London. Yes, because not a lot of people know where it is, to be honest, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you played a ukulele. Now, tell me, how on earth do you, do you, do you go, did you start that? Did you start at a young age or what? Well, there was a ukulele in the family years ago. Dad had an old, uh, what they call a Dallas A. They were made in London. And um, George Formby was a huge star. And they started to syndicate these cheap ukuleles. Uh, and... Um, it took off. He was really, um, before rock and roll and all that, the 30s and the 40s, uh, was, the music was much more simple. And if you bought sheet music in Denmark Street or Charing Cross Road all those years ago, say the pop tune number one record uh, on sheet music, at the top of the manuscript of the music, you used to have a little uh, four-string indication of which... which uh, notes to press down, strings to press down. So in other words, four string ukuleles were, was the pop of its day. Yes. And it's come back. Uh, you've probably heard kids in school learn the ukulele, but it's a simple way of playing a tune. And it was very, very popular uh, in the golden age of uh, 30s and 40s. Always on the uh, sheet music at the top of the uh, words of the song was the ukulele chords. Well, I, I didn't know that. And then, of course, later, when when rock and roll came in with Elvis Presley and everything else, 
uh, it changed to a six string guitar. So when you bought a, a sheet music in the 50s, late 50s, instead of having four strings that people were used to, six strings was the new in thing yes. to play a guitar. So that's when another another type of uh, change came in. You know, What's easier, another, four or six? Yeah, four string ukuleles and then six string guitar, and then that that really paved the way for the late fifties and the sixties. And what's easier to use, four string or six? Well, I, I, I speaking for myself, four strings. But when I tried, when I was a kid of about ten, when I tried to play uh, a metal string guitar, I found that much harder because you have to spread your fingers much further up the frets and whatever. And when you're only a kid of ten, you know, well, it's like the piano. You know, you, you can do this. As you grow, you can you can manage it. Having said that, some of the kids who play ukuleles up in Blackpool, yeah. it, it was absolutely. They should do a TV show just on the kids. Really fantastic! You've never you've never seen anything like it with the children. Yeah, They're playing ukuleles, and also they learn the words of these blooming George Formby songs, which mention the <laughs> they, they sing about the old currency. You remember, like you've heard of half a crown and two bob and one and three and all this. They've learnt the songs, 12-year-old kids singing George Formby songs of the 30s. And I think that is so British oh, and so fantastic. wonderful. I, you know, it blows me away every time I see the kids play. Yeah, but you find this, you know, I was um, uh, doing that quiz I do in the Mayflower a couple of weeks ago, and I mentioned Dad's Army. Oh, yeah. And I suppose, I don't suppose any of you like this, that in here, because, you know, you're, uh, sometimes I speak to young people... A dad's army. Oh no! What? And, and they're like, no, I don't find it funny at all. But a few of them stuck their hands up, and they absolutely love it. And they're they're like early twenties. That's good, isn't it? You know, I some, think that's very encouraging. I, as I say, I, I just I'm just blown away by the fact that kids can be bothered to learn an old George Formby song. Do you know some of the songs are wartime, and it's it's before my time. They, they, there's, there's one oh, song. Oh come on, Ray! I don't George, think that, there's nothing that's before your time. Oh, there is, dear. A, a, <laughs> yeah, there's a George Formby song. I kid you not. It's called "Thanks, Mr. Roosevelt." So yeah. it's obviously about the Second World War, about America. George joining into the uh, Second World War. Thanks, Mr. Roosevelt. And the kids have learnt it like it was a pop song made two weeks ago. That, that isn't that... That's what you call an anachronism. It's, it, 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 you can't really believe it's... 19, was it? Not, not 19. It's 2015, dear. Yes. Isn't that good, though? I think it's fantastic. <laughs> we got, we got um, Wendy it says... It the pants off a van. Uh, it, it, well, she's with us this morning. She's probably <laughs> no. gone to sleep now. She's probably gone to sleep now. Uh, Wendy says, I love Dad's Army, but then I'm an old fart. I, and sh and he, she's written this right. I love listening to Ray. Ray. So there we are. Uh she loves Thank you, no. to you. That, actually Dad's Army was my dad's phone right we, well, we, we, got... we used to watch Dad's Army on UK Gold and we'd, we'd never seen them before because my, a... mum, my mum didn't find it a funny at all it's on BBC so it was too. banned well it was probably went out in 1969 1970 and all those years my mum wouldn't have it on so my poor old dad he never saw it after my mum oh. died years later and I was a carer for my dad I used to put on these programs that my dad absolutely adored. He'd never seen it. Yeah. He'd never seen Dad's yeah. Army. Have you got... Um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You ready? Yeah, go on. Have you got your ukulele there? Do you want me to give you a tune? Can you? I'll give you a tune if you like. We would love um, that. You'll have to hang on, and I'll just have to put the phone down. OK. And I'll, yeah. give you t I'll, give you, I'll give you a little quick burst on my banjo. Yeah, Ken Dodd used to say, your, um, your, I'll, your I'll have a quick burst there. on my banjo. I'll do it right now. Instrument, not machine. As quick okay. as I can. All right, we'll wait for you. Um, and uh, good morning to Mike. Good morning, Mike, who's in Brighton. And he says, happy Easter, Chris. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you as well, Mike. Can you believe I was excited waiting for your show? Oh, you must be the only one. <laughs> I do have these visions sometimes of people. I'm here. I'm back. Now, this home is, from this the is shops. a different one to what I was playing oh, last night. Is. This is in C. The well, C hang on a second. Hang on a second, Ray. I'm yeah. just, just in a little email there. I, I just get these visions of people rushing back from the shops or something for 12 o'clock. But I think you're probably the only one, Mike. He says, um, You mentioned the black cap. Here's a funny fact. When I worked there in 1987, 
a pint cost one pound thirty six. Oh, my God. Oh, keep up the good work. Love, Mike and Sunny Brighton. P.S. The invite still stands. Thank you, Mike. He's invited me to go down to his hotel. Yes, he's, he's run an hotel down there. He's in, in, where, in Brighton or where was that? In Brighton. Oh, Brighton. Oh, yes. Yeah. You, I heard you mention it on your show the other day. He said, yeah. He said I can stay there for as long as I want, even two hours. <laughs> Is that <laughs> Legends on the Seafront? Is it what? Is it Legends? Oh, I don't know which hotel it is, actually. <laughs> which hotel is it, Mike? Do let us know. OK, you got your instrument ready there? I have. I've got my ukulele here. And what I'll do, because you mentioned the black cat, I uh, shall do it. Introduction, 1987. Anyone who saw Regina Fong, one of, one of the jingles he mimed to was one of my creations. And at the beginning, I said, this is the BBC Home Service. Yes. We present, not Regina Fong, we present Ray Reynolds and his ukulele. Are you ready, then? We're ready. Do it. OK, yeah, I've got to put the phone down. <laughs> I go in the cleaning to earn an earnest pop For a nosy brother it's an interesting job Now it's a job that just suits me A window cleaner you would think But you can see what I can see When I'm cleaning windows Only moaning couples too You should see them girl and crew You'd be surprised at things they do When I'm cleaning windows In my profession I work hard But I'll never stop I'll find a spot in my work I get right to the top the blushing bride, she looks divine. The bridegroom is doing fine. I'd rather have his job tonight when I'm cleaning windows. Cleaning windows. There's right. I think well, that'll I do. Fantastic, I think that'll Ray. Do. I think Anne's had enough now. <laughs> 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 well, that was camp, wasn't it? Oh, that's wonderful. Does it take a long time to learn that, Ray? Well, I, I told you about being a kid and strumming a little bit, but uh, the George Formby Society will teach you how to play the tap stroke because some of his strokes were the tap stroke or the triple. And it made it a bit more, um, well, it made it very interesting. And people still try to perfect it to this day, including me, you know. But there you are. Yeah. Well, it sounds good to me, my friend. Well, it's it's like that thing, you know, I, I learned to play the piano. I can't, can you read music at all? I've, uh, I saw you playing the keyboard uh, on a, on an old uh, a previous uh, One recording, of the old and shows, I thought I was very it, impressed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, do you keep, still keep that up? Yes. Yeah, I got a lovely Yamaha uh, piano downstairs. I bought that with my wages that I got for New Year's Eve, nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> that was very good wages that night. Let me tell you that now. And I bought a piano with the money, and it's electric. Yeah. And um, I... yes, indeed, it's still downstairs, and I. I um almost every day it gets switched on and um I, I like uh, religious um music like hymns and and oh, brilliant. and all that sort of thing so I'm yeah. learning a couple of those at the moment but I I, I I can't really read music and just about read the no. top line that was my trouble um in the 60s I I did, I did join a group uh, in Walthamstow for a little while and I remember uh, we had a small a small keyboard, and it it sounded like Ina Sharple's harmonium in the oh, yes. ro in the Coronation Street yes. because it was very very basic sound, and I had a tape recorder for an amplifier. But nevertheless, I I was in this uh, rhythm and blues group, and I I remember playing House of the Rising Sun, and one I think one guy in the group, the band, he liked he liked it, right. but the rest of them thought I was shit, and I was terrible really. <laughs> but I was only a kid of about sixteen, you know, just learning. The trouble is, uh, not being and, able you, to... and you just used to copy what was on the radio and House of the Rising Sun, you know, yes. and the animals. That was that yes. was the big number one. So so you think every every guy's dream, you want to try and play like you. 
songs of the like, day. Yes. Yeah, I, so I did that for I did that for a little while, but it didn't. It did. I was like, um, I wouldn't concentrate on reading the music. No, playing no. by ear, and then some people can do it wonderfully well. I think but, uh, once, other people um, have to have the dots in front of them. Once you can play by ear. You can't mm. learn the music because you can play by ear. But I, the trouble with me is I can't play in any key. Do you understand mm. what I mean? Um, the more black notes there are, the more trouble I have. Um, oh, that, that, now that's the other way round too. You've heard of Irving Berlin, Irving Berlin, the composer? Yep, yes. He wrote White Christmas and Easter Parade, for yes. enough. But um, he was a wonderful American composer. Well, he had his... If you can imagine a piano with uh, all the top off and all the bits exposed, and he had it a handle, because he could only play on the black notes, apparently, and then he turned this handle, and the whole thing would crank up and move along, so yeah. he could continue yeah. playing on the black notes yes. in the same key that he yes. wrote this, all those wonderful songs yes. on. Yes, now my, my keyboard down, my piano downstairs, uh, yeah. indeed has transpose buttons, a lot of the new ones do now, and if you can't play in the key that it's written in, you literally yeah. just whack it up or down a couple by pushing yeah. a button, and then you're playing in that key, although not on the actual notes written on the music. That's exactly so, how um, Irving Berlin yes, works, yeah. Yes, and, so, and, and when you listen to some of these songs how and you analyse them, either the writer, the composer, or the writer, rather like Andrew Lloyd Webber and, uh, and what's his face, uh, Tim Rice, um, isn't it marvellous how one person can do the whole thing and the other people have to have a team, uh, two two people, to do two different jobs. But if you're a genius, you can do everything, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm a genius, really. You had a nice I'd love time to be one, night. dear. Yeah, no, but no is it, isn't it nice when you appreciate just how much work has gone into uh, something which has become uh, a memorable tune or film or something? in the last hundred years and yeah. you think it still stands up today now that I think if you died if you died tomorrow and you'd achieve something like that it, it, what a wonderful thing to do you know yeah yeah uh, I've just got a note back here from uh, Mike he says I'm not running the hotel oh I've, ah. okay I thought you were running the hotel Mike <laughs> Sorry, he says he loves the ukulele when I'm cleaning windows. In my case, glasses in the glass washer. Oh, he's a barman. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he can get us in there for nothing. So it's, yes, indeed, it is indeed legends that he runs. Uh, yeah, um, I remember that well. My uh, friend got, Dr. Yard Doris used to come down there and perform. And, um, well, you so, know, when we used to do the, when we used to do Central Station, you used to have Phil Starr, Dot Yard yeah. Doris, and uh, all these people, they used to do Brighton as well. So all of the, uh, Toppin, uh, Toppin and Butch, of course. Yes. All yes. of, all the, all of the uh, main drag acts used to do London and Brighton. Yeah. And uh, it still is like that today, really, isn't it? Wendy says she loves you play, watching you play the ukulele on the karaoke videos. She loves oh. it. Oh, yeah. thank you very So, much. you know, last night, now, mm -hmm. unfortunately, you won't be. You can't see this because of while well, you're talking on to me on the I, phone. I can see your picture, oh, but you I, I've switched off the sound so it well, takes it's the going lag. To be, it's lag to yeah, it will be maybe thirty seconds behind from what yeah, you're yeah, on fine, the phone. That's fine. That's all right. But look, you remember that? You know that that chap who comes down, George. Yes, of course. Right. He gave me a little gift last night, which I thought was rather wonderful of him. And I've got it wasn't it a necklace, was it? And it is, because he sees me drinking tea all the time. Oh, yeah. He said it's about 35 years old. He's given me a little teapot. Yeah. Right? Oh, Which I'm yeah. going to show everyone today. A little teapot. I'm a little teapot, short and <laughs> stout. My mum used to sing that here's for kids in pl the and, play, play and, school. Oh, here's my spot. And a, and a matching cup. A oh, little yeah. matching uh, teapot and cup. Can you see that or not? Can you hold it up? I'm holding it up now. But yeah, it, it I've got a bit a of a bit, delay. A bit see. far behind there. It's, it's and, my age. That's all right. It's painted in like um, rainbow colours. Oh, that's, oh, what a, oh, isn't that? That's very gay. And inside, it's all green. Look, it's isn't it lovely? Oh, that's <laughs> white. That it? is fantastic. That's from George, is it? Yeah, George well, good gave, old George. Yeah, George yeah. gave me those yesterday. I, and a cup. And a cup with it. Yes, yes, a cup. Got a cup there as well. Oh no, a mug. Yes. I do feel Rainbow sometimes, colours. you know, people give me these gifts and I, I, I feel I shouldn't use them, but just display them somewhere in the yeah, studio, yeah. you know. Well, but 
In my conservatory, I've got a Rover's Return teapot that Dot Yard Doris gave me. Oh, yeah. You know, one of those commemorative Coronation Street things. But on the... You would like this uh, for your studio. If you were broadcasting from the conservatory, um, <laughs> in my conservatory, I've got the rainbow flag pinned to the roof, dear. Oh, is that why? Is that, you'll have stones... <laughs> so those colours... Yeah, a rainbow flag pinned to the roof of my conservatory, yeah. Does it keep the Let sun the out? sun shine in. Does it keep the sun out? <laughs> no, it's just there for decoration, dear. But, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> just in case the neighbours were looking through the <laughs> from their back gardens and say, well, "There's a screaming queen lives over there." Look, see the rainbow flag. <laughs> <laughs> lovely to talk to you, Ray. All right. It's great to talk to you, and uh, have a lovely weekend. I shall see you on Monday. Happy Easter, cheerio, Ray. Thanks. Take care, matey. Bye-bye. The, bye. the bye. lovely Ray Reynolds uh, calling in from uh, London. He, he really is a, nice, a lovely chap. He really is. I've actually known... We've known of... I've known him... Known... Is that the word? I've known him for years, and many, many years. But we've only just, in the last six months, started talking regularly. And he comes uh, through him coming along to the karaoke nights with his ukulele. So it's, it's just amazing, that is. Uh, Anne says, I can't believe I missed you doing karaoke in 286 back in the day. It was a bar called... Uh, yeah, that would be... Uh, well, it was called 286, this place in Lewisham. Um, she says, uh, the reunion was at a bar called Reva. Great to see some old faces there. Tony Power, who is involved in Eurovision, and Jason Prince warming us up before he went off to the uh, uh, Vauxhall Clubs. And talking Eurovision, I'm just going to come on to a Eurovision show that I saw last night. I don't know if you saw it, Anne, or not. She says, I've only been out there once and ended up seeing Lily Savage before I knew who she was many years ago. Vauxhall is changing so much. Yes, we used to have a lot of the tinned fruit growing up like prunes and custard and stewed rhubarb too. What, you had tins of fruit growing, Anne? How'd you do that then, dear? Do you plant... <laughs> do you plant the whole tins? Do they come up with tins? And if so, how do you open them? Does a tin opener come up as well? You're a strange creature. You really are. Do you get many tins off a tin tree? <laughs> well done, Ray. I've seen him singing and playing at the Quebec. Very nice. Yes, he's, he really is fantastic. And Anne says she loves the teapot. It, it's a beautiful little teapot, that is, and I shall use it. In fact, I think I'll use that uh, for when I do my dinner later on. I've got another one of those lovely Linda McCartney open ravioli type thing i'm not quite sure what they are okay uh yes so yesterday um there was a program eurovision 60th birthday party now did anyone see that on the telly because i got in last night from the karaoke i got in about half one about about quarter past two last night and uh, after bringing my stuff in from the car i sort of sat down and i found those remember those two chocolate biscuits wendy i had on the show the other day yes i bought those downstairs from this this purpose-built television video audio and video streaming studio i did indeed and i had two chocolate biscuits and a cup of tea and i put the telly on and then i i remembered oh i've got that eurovision light thing i taped earlier i say taped yeah, you know, no one tapes anything anymore. Oh, I bet you have, Wendy. I bet you've got an old old VCR thing of you. We have a hard disk recorder here. Wonderful. A free sat hard disk recorder. And I've recorded this Eurovision thing. 60th birthday party. And I, I didn't know what to expect. It was brilliant, except for one thing. I'll come to that in a minute. It, it was brilliant, except for one thing. Um... The staging was really good. It came from, I think, the Theatre Royal in London. I think that's where it was uh, uh, filmed earlier during the week. Really, really, really good. And it had some wonderful old Eurovision songs on there, sung by their original artists. Now, when they won this contest... These people were in their 20s. Now they're in their 60s and probably 70s, some of them. And it was so nice, so nice to see them back on that stage. doing. And it was quite emotional for some of them. Oh, it really was. 
the lady from Germany, Ambition Frieden. Do you remember that? La da 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 absolutely packed this theatre royal everyone was dancing and um other other people that i saw there as i say fantastically staged the background was great the lights everything the sound was good everything was fantastic exactly as you would expect a bbc show to be uh, sometimes you see itv try these things it just doesn't work they haven't got a bloody clue what they're doing and i just hope that they never, ever get away from the BBC licence fee. They need to keep that. Because if it goes commercial, it's, it, it will never work. It will never work. Anyway, uh, other people that were on there. Uh, I think one of my favourite British um, singers who represented us, uh, oh, it must be going back at least 12 years now, was Imani. Where are you now? La da 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 Where are you now? You know that one? Do you, oh, come on, you do know that one. I know you do. So there's her. We also had Bobby Sox. Let it swing and let it rock and roll. Burp, burp. Let it swing and let the music take control. It's, that's the funny thing. I never thought I knew the words to that. And yet I've just sung it. Isn't that strange? There was the Herays doing Diggy Loo Diggy Lay. Diggy Loo Diggy Lay, life is going my way. You know that one, yeah, I'm sure you do. Uh, the German girl, as I mentioned, Ambition Freedom. La da 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 da. Oh, it's really, and you know, all these people are like 40 or 50 years older than what they were on the night, some of them. Amazing. There was Johnny Logan. Oh, and he looked, he came on in his white suit. Hold me now. And of course, what's another year for someone who's lost everything that he owns? And I have, I've lost everything. Well, it's because everything is gone. It's all gone. I've only got you left. That is the truth. In my life, there's only you left. No one, where, where, you know, where is my, where is someone to love me? No one, it's only you. Only you can make my dreams come true. Yeah. Uh, there was, of course, last year's winner, Conchita Worst. Rise like a phoenix. Say from the ashes, uh, up from the ashes, seeking love and adventure. Retribution, we all know. And of course, I won £400 from her last year. Yeah, because I put a bet on the song, didn't I? It's the only time I've ever been into a betting shop. I put a £100 for that song to win. I, will, I, I might have another go this year. It's the only thing I can ever see myself betting on. But if, if, if there's a song that I think really stands out, and there must be no doubt in my mind that it will win... Then I will do the same again this year. I haven't heard any of the songs this year. Only the British one, which is like a a, a Charleston thing. You know the Charleston. Da, 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 da. It's a bit like that. It's very different. But I don't know. I mean, I, re I really don't know how much of a, a a chance that has got, really, to win that uh, British one this year. Uh, your thoughts on Eurovision, perhaps? Perhaps you'd like to send us in a message or even call in today. OK, Skype United Kingdom Talk or phone 020 8144 Good morning to Marge. Marge is late, but she is here. Good morning, Marge, who says, can you see the moon eclipse in the UK? It's cool. Uh, no, it's daytime, Marge. We won't be able to see any moon at this time. Is there, a, is there an eclipse now? I don't know. I don't know. Someone look that up, please. Is there a moon eclipse somewhere? <laughs> the only eclipse I see is when my sister walks in front of a light. God, the whole, the whole town goes dark when she does that. I'm telling you that now. Uh, so that was Conchita Worst. And, of course, I think my favourite performers on the show last night have got to be... The Brotherhood of Man doing Save Your Kisses for Me. Oh dear, they did look old. 
<laughs> they did look old, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because they were there on that stage during their little dance and it was just fantastic. Old and large were the Brotherhood of Man, but we don't care because it is the Brotherhood of Man and they were on there last night. Absolutely fantastic show. Try and watch it on the BBC iPlayer if you want to watch it on there. That will be available on there. Um, but, and Anne is just on the phone. Hello, Anne. Chris, is that you? It sounds it, it, so weird. Well, it's not anyone else, dear, is it? Who else oh would it be? God. I thought I was, honestly, it didn't sound like it. <laughs> Do you think we have a load, of, a bank of operators oh. here standing by to take your call? Well, we haven't, it's me not, and that's I'm, it. I'm calling in on the landline, not on the Skype this week. So, and I'm watching your face and there's a bit of a delay. So I'm a bit, a bit spooked out, really. But Oh, there, there will always be a delay on that. Yeah, watch yeah. out for that. Yes. So I just caught you in on the Brotherhood of Man. You're talking about the Brotherhood of Man? Did you see him last night? I was watching the show just as I was getting ready to go out, and um, it was brilliant. So I, I will watch it again today. But um, I must, I must say, if I was on my way out and I would started watching that, I wouldn't have been able to leave. <laughs> it, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Except Anne. So you, did you see the Brotherhood of Man or not? I did. And yes. I think I think I did. I think they've all got older, haven't they? They're oh, all older. Old. That's an understatement, dear. I know. I thought, oh, my God. I mean, I'm not, I've never up. thought I'd hear myself saying this, but they actually oh, looks older than you, Anne. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, bless. Well, you keep using your oil, Chris. What is that oil again? Tell oh, your uh, viewers. Oh, um... That lovely bio oil. Bio oil. Give your oil. secrets away. Bio oil. That's what I put on my face. Forget, you've got to be in HD quality now, Chris. HD quality. I am in HD that. quality. Have a look at your screen, dear. I am in HD. <laughs> Unless well, you've got a dodgy I, internet connection. You, you need more bio oil, I think. No, more I'm bio. Really I put, maybe I'll throw some at the camera as well and see if that makes any difference. <laughs> um, one of my... I think a song that I actually love, I have to say, is the Russian song. I know they're not very happy, uh, people, the Russians at the minute, but... Honestly, well, why are they Russian not happy song. then? What's wrong with them? Oh, I don't know. I oh, we're hear. not talking about politics. We're talking about music. In music, yeah. there is no politics. Well, Everyone no mixes and that's it. We know the Russians. The Russians will not be applauded that well because of their their stance on um, homosexuality. You know that. It's quite contentious. But their song is fantastic. But we'll... Will it go far? I don't know. You must. I think it's called a million years or a million tears. Oh, I look at that. Let me write years. that down. Pardon? I'm going to write that down. A million yeah, years. Yeah, a million. It's the only one that jumped out for me. I think Norway's got a great song and Sweden, and that they they would be ones. And I think if I can remember Australia. Have you heard them all then? I did because I was following Chris um, Sean's um, Sean Crabtree's wonderful Eurovision tribute a couple of weeks ago. So oh I did right, okay. Yes, he did a he did a songs. show, didn't he? Yes, yes. Yeah. And it was really, really good because you got a real chance to see them and, and hear them. And uh, but I think the Russian one is absolutely brilliant. So. Okay. Are you gonna? I might put another little bet on. If I think something's definitely going to win this year, I'll put another little bet on. Yeah. Maybe well, I'll put ten thousand pounds on this time, and then I'll be able to buy a house <laughs> with the winnings. <laughs> well, it, it's funny, isn't it? We all we all like a bet, and it's like, what's the song that you remember? I only heard that song once, and I, I sort of remembered the title as well. And I think it's a combination of things that makes for a winning song. And you're sort of looking, you're trying to feel what's the winning song, what's going to do it. But you never know with the public, do you? It could be no. a, it could be there was monsters one year, wasn't it? And then you had Jedward, and you never know what the public are going to go behind, do you? Because you don't know. You've got so much of the East and block voting and they're old oh, some of their songs are awful aren't they i think um i think uh, some people that want to win <laughs> over analyze they over analyze and they think well that won that year because of that that won that year because of that so if we put a bit of that in and a bit of that in then as should win <laughs> and it doesn't work like that no. it, these people that seek perfection will never ever get it no Sometimes it became, can be quite a mess, actually, yeah, and you, yeah. you hear it for the first few few notes. Yes, and, oh yes. my god! They put in the sexy dancers. Someone oh. else is in like hot pants. Yeah. Then you get a couple of characters that are dressed up, and then you get oh my god! And it does sound so like yeah. something that's been written thirty years ago. Some some folk mountain, while some shepherd was looking after his sheep, and you think, <laughs> oh my god! Do they have TV <laughs> up there <laughs> in the mountains? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I tell you, there was one thing on the birthday show last night I really didn't like. You will be surprised me to say <coughs> this. Graham Norton. Oh, the beard. What the, beard the hell one. did he look like? <laughs> he looks like, I'm sorry, he looked like, he looks dirty. He looks oh. like he hadn't had a wash 
oh. for 200 years. The beard was dreadful, and he looked like he was 200 years old. I don't know what's happened to him. I'll tell you what, it's it was 50 awful. shades of grey. 50 shades of grey, Chris. Hey? You know what, he's Father Christmas in the making. Definitely Father Christmas in the awful. making. It was awful. Thank God that woman was there. She was really good. I liked her very much. Do you know what her name is? Yeah, no, the lady in the red dress, no. I'll find out for you. Yeah, she was very good presenting. Yeah. And it, she, she, she was all part of that kind of fun... You know, the whole thing you expect for Eurovision, but... Well, yeah, she came I, I across as it. fun and knowledgeable. I'm afraid he didn't. He was awful. Awful. I <laughs> know, oh, I don't... I, somebody tell him about the beard. No, he's, he's added 20 years on him. What is the thing with beards? Oh, oh you tell me. He does look like he's God in the make. Actually, looked more like Moses. Yeah. And speaking of the Holy Weekend... Ave Maria! <laughs> Ave Maria. I'm just trying to find out that woman's name. I've got, I can't I've find got it. one verse. Can I, can I sing one little verse of Ave Maria? Is that wise? Yeah. I just thought, well, we've raised doing his banjo. Well, Sorry, get on with it then. Yeah. Okay, here's a little bit. Um, oh, <clears throat> Ave Maria. Gratia plena. Maria Gratia Plena Maria Gratia Plena Ave, Ave Dominus Dominus Tecum there we are, Chris. Well, that yes. was very, very nice. I didn't know you were doing an album, though. No, no, not quite yet. Maybe, <laughs> maybe before I die. Maybe before no, I I'm die. Just, I'm just looking at this thing. <laughs> uh, that Swedish name was... Her name was Petra Mead. Petra oh, right. Mead. She yeah. hosted it in 2013. Yeah. But it says here that it was at uh, London's Apollo Hammersmith. Yeah, that's why I thought it was recorded like, about four days ago. Oh, OK. <laughs> I thought it was at the... Um, I thought it was right in central London. I didn't yeah, know Yeah, you were that. saying, was it the Theatre Royal you kept mentioning? And I was thinking, it's, I don't think it was there. It was Hammersmith. Right. Hammersmith Palace, I think. Hammers the, the old palais. Do you okay. remember? Oh, yes. there, Chris? Yeah. No, no, it's not Amersworth, but it's not the old Amersworth. Hammersmith Palais has gone. Yeah. It is now student accommodation. Okay, it's uh, probably the, the Odeon. What was the Odeon then? Correct, the Apollo? yes. Yeah, so the, the big, big Event M Apollo is the old Hammersmith Odeon. <clears throat> That's what it yeah. is. All right? Yeah, okay, Chris. Well, look, I'm going to go back and watch my show for this afternoon. I'm waking up after a good night out, so it's lovely to catch your show, and you do bring a smile to the nation. Chris, we, you know, there's, there are more than two people out there excited for your show. No, there's Saturday. five. There's five today. <laughs> yeah, but all the reruns and repeats. I hope you're negotiating all the, all the reruns, all the contracts all over the world. You are, aren't you? <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Take care, Chris. Happy Easter and have a wicked weekend. Have a lovely day. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye now. Uh, Marge says Anne sings beautifully. Isn't that nice? Yeah. She does sing beautifully. She she was uh, in a choir, I think, at one point. Um, uh, uh, Marge just forgot there is a time difference. Yeah, the time difference is like eight hours, Marge. It's eight hours, dear. Do try and keep up with us, dear. <laughs> Thank you, Marge. Uh, Chris, Mike in Brighton again. Uh, I have a question. How many shirts, tops, jumpers do you have? You're like Kay Burley on Sky TV. Always a different top every day. Well, that's a thing, Mike. I, I do try... I, now, you know, I've got a limited amount. I'm not a fashion person. OK? I tend not to spend much money on clothes unless my best mate is with us. And then he starts, because he don't care. You know, he quite happily paid £200 for a pair of jeans, which I think is a complete and utter waste of money. You know, if, 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 if you're old black cap staff, like yourself and me, we don't spend money on clothes, do we? You know, I remember sitting on... you. I remember, Mike, you sitting on that little seat... Half, just a minute. Halfway um, uh, down the, the black cap, sort of in between the front and back bar, you'd be sitting on that seat with your little check shirt and old jeans on, wouldn't you? Collecting the money on the door. You know, one pound for the pub, four pound for the pocket. Is that how it worked? <laughs> and I used to arrive there with suitcases full of records. Do you remember, Mike? 
Do you remember the very last song I played on my first, um, my first Saturday or no, it was Friday, wasn't it? On my first Friday night of the Black Cap. Do you remember the very last record I played? Because I do, I do. It was Boom Bang a Bang by Lulu. My heart goes, but it's another Eurovision song, isn't it? But I, that's the point. Where was Lulu last night? We should have had Lulu on that programme. My heart goes boom, bang, a bang, boom, bang, a bang. Love in the air. Or something like that. I can't remember. Love your tablecloth with hood. Where did you buy it from and how much did it cost? Oh, this was only about 10 quid. Sports Direct. Sports Direct. Dirt cheap clothes of good quality. And this is like, this has got to be five years old. They last. The stuff there does last. You can get generally slash into cheese shirts, sort of two for eight pounds or something like that. I can't remember what they are at the moment there. Um, as for Johnny Logan, he's a really nice guy. I had the pleasure of dining with him a few years back. I was chatting to Tony Power the other week in Legends, where we were staying, and he says he loves your show too. Yes, we had Tony on a few weeks ago, talking about his new CD. Because he's got a compilation CD of... Um, uh, perhaps I can find something out about that. Tony Power... Oh, one minute. He did, um, he came on the show, there he is. Oh, oh, damn, where is it now? Eurovision Connections album. Yeah, he's got a Eurovision Connections album out, um, with songs from Anne-Marie David, Nima Kavanagh, uh, Scott Fitzgerald, remember Scott, go before, uh, oh, Scott Fitzgerald, he sung that song, go, go, didn't he? Go before you break my heart once more. He sung that, and he was winning right the way through the contest, and then pipped right on the last vote by one point. Wow. How unlucky can you be? Um, anyway, he's got this uh, new album out. Oh, it's in out in May. I thought it was out now. Just in time for Euro Eurovision. So uh, good luck to Tony on that. Yeah, he called in and uh, spoke about his uh, uh, forthcoming album. Perhaps he'll do it again at uh, one of the nighttime shows because you'll have a, a different audience at night time. Uh, am I growing potatoes this year, Chris? Anne wants to know. No. No, no more vegetables now, Anne. I've done that now. Uh, I've got all flowers in that patch. I do a little show out there. I do one of the short videos out there next week. And you will see how that completely empty patch has grown over the last few months. It's now full of plants and flowers. Yeah, which I, I keep adding to it. Because I like it to be quite wild. I don't like all this. You know, these. you go to some of these garden places and they're you know, almost cutting around cutting around the grass with with now scissors so that everything's the same length and everything's perfect no i don't like it I like it wild i would prefer to be in a forest than hyde park you you get me that i i, I like it a bit wild like that uh marge says it's actually six hours time difference uh, from there so uh, thank you marge for that now where are we going now let me see uh What's that? Oh, good God, it's, you know, it's six minutes to one already. We're nearly finished already. So we've done the teapot from George. Um, no, there won't be a live show this Wednesday because I'm doing a quiz night. All right, boys and girls. Uh, here's, here's something I bet you didn't know. Now, are you a Sainsbury's shopper? Do you shop in Sainsbury's? Because here, boys and girls, is some very important news. Yes, Breaking news on United Kingdom Talk. I should have a flasher that goes across the screen then, shouldn't I? Something like that. Let me just turn off my phone number now because uh, we're coming to the end of the show. There we are. Uh, I need to add a bla breaking news. Yes. Now, who's got a Sainsbury's Nectar card? Have you got one of those? Well, here's something you won't know. This was in the Daily... This is in the Daily Mail today. Uh, Sainsbury's is halving... The number of nectar points it offers shoppers in a move that could speed the death of the loyalty card. In today's Daily Mail. The changes coming into force next weekend, so not today. If you want loads of shopping, go and do it now. You know, you, <laughs> you probably spend 200 quid and get about 10 pence in points. That's all it is. It's, you get barely anything from these cards. 
It is such a waste of time and money. Anyway, it says the changes coming into force next weekend mean a family will have to spend, are you ready for this, £500. Now, let me say that again. £500. A family will have to spend £500 to earn a £2.50 voucher. <laughs> I mean, why do they even bother? It's all in the head, you see. You think you're getting a lot for nothing. And actually, you're getting something very... It's, it's a bit like, you know, buying a bag of sugar, I suppose. As Oh, you bought this bag of sugar. Here's another four grains free of charge. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. You know, if it says 50% more, yeah. 20% more, yeah. But... £2.50 for £500. Well, I don't even, I can't even work out what percentage that is. So if it was, if it was 500, so if it was five, so for, f oh, I can't work that out, but it's just a waste of time. Absolutely a waste of time. Or for £350, you can get free coffee. <laughs> Experts have blamed the supermarket price war, which means shoppers are less loyal. Uh, uh, so you'll only get one point for every pound instead of one point for uh, instead of two points for every pound. They're halving the amount of points you get. Uh, a recent survey by the Grocer magazine found 33 commonly bought items cost 60 pounds and 15 pence, which is 18 pounds more than buying Similar things in Audi. Sainsbury's claims the next points changes are not designed to deliver any immediate savings, but experts say it will cut costs in the long term. So, I mean, that's just... I think they're making a mistake there, to be honest. But I, I, I'm not a Sainsbury's fan. My mum used to love doing all that. She all did all her shopping in Sainsbury's, to be honest. Um... I've never been keen on the place. I find the staff a bit plastic. I find the customers bloody rude. In. Oh, it's awful people going there. Sainsbury's. I'm sorry they do. You know, I speak as I find. The awful customers go in Sainsbury's. They really are awful in there. Not everyone, but a good proportion of them are just they're, they're just in for themselves. I couldn't care less. Unlike Waitrose, where it's all nice and friendly. And it is. It's lovely, it really is. There is a huge difference. Do it, do it. perhaps you've got some time, you know. Go in Sainsbury's, do some shopping, and then go in Waitrose, and you will see the difference. I'm not talking about prices. And it's not cheap. Sainsbury's is not cheap. Wendy says, uh, Morrison's have a good thing going at the moment. It's called Match and More. Uh, and they match their prices to the other stores on what you buy and give you back the difference on a voucher. I found it very good, actually. I've had about £30 back so far in about four months, which isn't bad, is it? I do know Sainsbury's do a mix and match as well. So once you've got to the two, a little voucher comes out. And if it's cost you less in Tesco's, then you get this voucher or whatever, you know, Morrison's or whatever. Then a voucher comes out and it says, save 13 pence off your next shop. Well, why do they have to do Why can't you just make the prices the same and be done with it? All these stupid bits of paper and cards coming out all over the place. I can't breathe in here through vouchers appearing all over my floor. I'm suffocating in vouchers. I really am. Suffocating, dear. Suffocating. <laughs> um. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me have a look. OK, we're, we're, we're out of time, really, today. I'll just check I've got no more messages left. Because don't want to miss anyone out. We don't like to miss people out. No, nope, nothing on there. Finally, Anne says, I can't stand loyalty cards, Chris. I feel they've been brainwashing us into accepting this. Oh, absolutely. I don't like them either. Um, this very automated world we're living in, we have become robots. Well, you've only got to walk down the street and see the kids on their mobile phones, oblivious to everything else around them. They are robots. Robots. Um... Big Brother is watching every move we make. We would be loyal to these supermarkets if they let us shop in peace and stop monitoring our every move. Asda's have the friendliest store and people. I'll go along with that. I find Asda as well very, very friendly. 
as the people and staff, very friendly. Sainsbury's, rude. Not the staff. The staff are not, not well. I say that. You know, you generally got the old bag who works the self-service um, tills. She or he, depend, doesn't matter who it is, okay, it's not one particular person, but I've noticed the people who work on the self-service checkouts are generally miserable. I have no, they're not friendly at all. I hate Sainsbury's, I hate shopping in there. I really do. The only reason I go in there, it's the nearest one. That's the only reason. I try and make two trips per week to Waitrose. Sometimes me and Ronnie, we don't, my best mate Ron, we don't even buy anything in there. We just go around to talk to the staff. It's all very nice. There we go. The one o'clock time signal has spoken. Uh, finally, from Mark, he says, Hi, Chris, you got it, Rowan. It was one pound for the black cap and ten pound for me. Is that, how, is that how you bought your first house? <laughs> Thank you very much, boys and girls. It's been a pleasure uh, chatting to you today. As always, I'd be very grateful when you see the link come up for the live show. Oh, yes, that's the other thing I was going to tell you. Sometimes people try and click the live show links after the live show has finished. Now, it does work for a while, but then it stops working. So you have to wait for the recorded show to come up, which can take three or four hours to appear. OK, just to let you know that. Once you see the recorded show, I'd be very grateful if you could cut and paste and share any links to the show to, to spread the word. Because the more the merrier, we can be even happier in a big family. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you for a short show on Tuesday, OK? The next short video will be on Tuesday, and you can find that by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There you'll see three little screens, OK? There's the Saturday one, there's the short shows, and there's the Wednesday one. No Wednesday show this week, because I'll be hosting a quiz in Islington at a place called The King's Head. That's that's a late one. That's 9.30 to 11.30, that one, OK? Quiz night in Islington this week. Have a lovely Saturday and a wonderful Easter tomorrow. Thank you. Bye-bye.